this place. This place gets me. Kamakura is on the south side of the Tokyo metro area, just an hour away from Tokyo Station on the Kosuko Line, making it an easy day trip. It's a popular tourist town, and the majority of places to visit there are within walking distance of Kamakura Station. Luana first recommended we go to Kamakura because it's such a popular place to visit. It's a cute area with nice temples and scenic views. That was enough to get me there, but what made me really fall for the place was the low-key foodie vibe. One of the first places we came across was Chocolate Bank, a cafe that's hard to miss given its rather prominent front door attendant. While some places put on a big show for lackluster delivery, this place did not disappoint. The chocolate was incredible and the coffee was perfect. Being a chocolate fiend, it was the surprise highlight of the trip for me. Later in the morning, we came across an open area with some food carts and tables with a Hawaiian theme and fruity booze concoctions being served. So yes, of course, I got one. The food was interesting and the drinks weren't bad, but it took forever to get them. But it was a nice chance to take a break and do some people watching for a bit. Our somewhat odd food choice for the day was the late lunch we had, which was at a Chinese restaurant. I don't even remember why we chose the place. It was. Honestly, probably the result of some odd craving that I had at the time, but that's what we got. The food was okay, but the Chinese liquor, whatever it was, well, it was painful. Being a Japanese town with heavy tourism, of course there's going to be a temple or two worth visiting, and Kamakura definitely has that. The first we went to was Hasadera, which sits on the side of Mount Kamakura. There are a few things about Hasadera that make it interesting to visit. For example, in the early summer, its pathways are filled with hydrangeas, making for a beautiful stroll through the grounds. There's a cave called Bentenkutsu that you can walk through. Just mind your head as some of the ceilings can be very low. Because it sits on the side of a mountain, the views at Hasadera are incredible. You'll find yourself stopping in a few places along the walking paths just to take them in. And then there are the vast arrays of Jizo statues. When I first saw these little statues, I was intrigued. There were so many of them all lined up and I could only wonder what meaning they held. I think had I actually taken a few minutes to figure out what that meaning was, I would have had a somewhat different take on them. You see, Jizo statues are placed at the temple by grieving parents who lost their children during pregnancy or childbirth. On a small scale, every single one of those statues represents the worst for the family that placed it there. And taking them all in together, it's a scary picture of loss and lost potential, especially in a country like Japan that has struggled with declining birth rates for as long as it has. But don't let this turn you away from visiting Hasadera. As with any temple, shrine, or grave, these mementos are there to honor the past and keep their memories alive. Avoiding them would cause them to fade away and be lost forever, which defeats the entire purpose to begin with. So visit the temple, take it all in, and look out across these stunning vistas while holding dear the loss you may have had or being thankful that you haven't had to experience it for yourself. The other temple we visited was Kōtokuin, which is known for the Great Buddha of Kamakura. This statue is made of bronze and is over 43 feet tall when you include the base that it sits on. It's nearly 800 years old and weighs over 100 tons, and it's actually hollow, See, so you can go inside of it. We visited Kōtokuin toward the end of our day trip in Kamakura, so we didn't go inside, but it is an option. If you want to do this for yourself, make sure you plan it in advance by checking the opening times and checking for any potential closures. 
the great Buddha or the giant Buddha temple is actually just the Buddha, so don't expect a whole lot else. Um, usually when I've been at a bunch of other temples, there'll be a whole bunch of other stuff to see and you can kind of explore. And that's not the case with this one. Uh, so if you're coming to this one, just expect to see the Buddha and leave. Um, and that's it. So we're going to make our way back. I think we're going back to Yokohama and maybe go for a bit more exploring. We didn't quite finish there though. Just before we got back to Kamakura Station, we came across a food shop that was selling local snacks. Some of which we had to get simply for the fun of it. A whole dried squid, for example, made a perfect welcome to Japan gift for a buddy of mine that was arriving the next day. And a package of dried fish and banana chips. Yeah, because what kind of friend would I be if I didn't get these for somebody? So what can I say about Kamakura? It's a quintessential Japanese tourist town that's easily accessible from the Tokyo metro area, so expect crowds. We went during the winter, which I'm sure helped limit the number of people that were there, especially compared to the early summer when the flowers are blooming. But regardless of when you visit, it's worth doing so. The whole area is walkable and there are plenty of tourist maps readily available, so you don't have to worry about transportation or getting lost. All you have to do is get to Kamakura Station and you're all set. Are you doing bunny ears? I thought you were doing bunny ears. Oh, <laughs> I don't know if that's gonna work. Can't pinch it that way. Okay. Bigger, 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 bigger. Okay, squish. <laughs> 